Making a Stuart model steam plant, this is part 17. Special fittings for the condenser inlets and the main outlet on the side of the condenser which goes to the chimney. The last time you saw this part I was putting it in the acid bath. Now it's come out of the acid bath, it's been in a bucket of water and it's time to test whether or not the silver soldered joints from the unions to the pipe are good. First of all I check the fittings with my scriber to make sure there are no lumps of silver solder in there and that seems to be okay. Now I'm checking everything with the airline and there are no leaks so this is past fit for service. This is a commercial union that sits between two union nuts for extending pipes. And I've been using this fitting to show the arrangement of the exhaust from inside the condenser to the chimney. But the fitting is too short so I'm making a new one, a special one that is longer at one end than the other. First I need to turn down a piece of brass hexagon to 3 8 of an inch in diameter. Nothing difficult here, just check it with the micrometer and keep removing metal till it's the right size. Trying really hard not to remove too much metal and make the part undersize. This is the final cut and it is now exactly 3 8 of an inch in diameter. Next job, drill down the centre using a centre drill. This is going to be where the union cone sits, so it needs to be quite a deep centre, almost all the way in. Here I'm using one of my cheap and cheerful threading adapters. Maybe it's not quite as good as a tailstock die holder, but it's a lot cheaper and I can have every one of them pre-loaded with dies, which saves a lot of time. The piece of bar that I would normally use for the tailstock die holder is fitted in the tailstock quill. And by carefully following the speed of the cut with the hand wheel on the tailstock, you can get a very accurate thread. Here's the thread fitted with a union nut and a union cone. The next part of the job is to turn this around in the chuck and part off the excess that I don't want. And now is possibly the best top tip that I've ever shown. Instinctively I would hold the part by the thread to machine the other side but that's a terrible idea. Whereas this is a very good idea. Put a union nut on the thread you've already cut and then clamp the union nut and the piece of hexagon that you haven't machined in the chuck. Then you can machine away the brass to your heart's content without any fear of it breaking anything. And to speed up the job even further I always keep some union nuts of different sizes on the shelf behind the lathe. Here once again from a different viewpoint I'm using a tailstock die holder part that fits in the tailstock quill to make sure that the die is perfectly square to the work when I'm threading it. The lathe is in back gear for this process so all I do when I've finished is put it in reverse, hold the handle of the die holder and remove it. And now just like on the other end I'm using a centre drill and I'm centre drilling the part deeply. It's worth remembering that the tip of this centre drill will not break through into the hole of the other centre at the other side. And it's quite important to drill all the way through because if you don't do that then it's not going to be a very successful fitting. I'm really not being condescending with this comment. I've done this many times and forgot to drill the hole all the way through the centre. It's really easy to do. It is very important not to drill too big a hole in the centre of the fitting because it will weaken it. A hole of 3 16 of an inch in diameter should be fine because that's the internal diameter of a piece of quarter inch copper pipe. Now it's time to remove any marks that may have been made in the brass by the chuck jaws. I'm leaving the union nut in place just as a guide so you get a really nice flat finish on the part that I've machined. First of all I used some medium emery cloth and then I went over to wet or dry sandpaper. This is 400 grade. The fitting doesn't need to be polished, it looks okay as it is, because when it's fitted to the condenser, it's all good to be painted anyway. Here I'm first of all screwing the part in position and tightening it up with my Barco spanner. And quite contrary to what I get told by many expert viewers, this spanner does not seem to round any of the nuts that I use it on. I bent a piece of copper pipe to 90 degrees, Silver soldered on a union cone and in this clip I've just tightened it onto the inside of the fitting. Here I'm checking that there's sufficient clearance between the end of the pipe which is purposely chamfered and the top of the condenser. The next part of the job involves drilling two holes in the side of the condenser near the top. 
This is where the exhaust from the steam engines will enter the condenser. Once I drilled and threaded the holes, I fitted a pair of 3 8 by 32 threads per inch double fittings. These are standard commercial ones. The only difference is I drilled the bottom one a quarter of an inch to take this piece of bent quarter of an inch pipe. This will allow the exhaust from the second steam engine to exit very close to the top of the condenser, same as the other one. In this clip you get the idea of what's going on. It's all quite simple really, until you start to overthink it. And often I do that, my brain finds a more complicated way of doing the job than the obvious simple one. Yesterday I bought myself an Alexa Echo for the workshop, so that the ring doorbell that I also bought, which is screwed to the front door, will first of all tell me that somebody's at the door and then show me who it is. And I should know better because I am actually a computer network engineer, or at least that's what I did for about 15 years, amongst many other things. But I sort of found it really lumpy and difficult to set up anyway. It's done and it's all working. This is a part of the baseboard, round the back, where there's nothing much going on, until I fit this. It's a small grill that I've had for a long time and it will make a really good drain for the water outlet of the condenser as well as the drain pipe from the water gauge blowdown valve. And the good thing about this small drain is that it will fit in between the floor tiles almost perfectly. Sometimes my life can be quite schizophrenic. My car's gone wrong and it turns out to be the DAB radio module which is fitted in the most stupid place under the front seat and it got wet, then it stopped working. So I dismantled the DAB radio and I've actually cleaned it up a little bit and the components around the power supply check out OK. They didn't look too good, but we will see when I try and fit it back to the car. Although really, I think I'll have to buy a new one. And you wouldn't believe how much they are. I never had this sort of expense with the Series 3 Land Rover that I built in 1999. Such is the price of progress, and that's it for this video. I'd just like to say to you all, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.